overflows. Truth is cosmic. A master is one who comes to remind you of your potential. You have fallen into a deep sleep. He comes to wake you up from that, makes you aware of your own potentiality. You too can do this. You too are that. You too are that. Swait Ketu, this is one of the important statements of the Upanishads. I am that I am. This is also a statement from Bible. God tells Moses, I am that I am. This is my name forever. In Ramcharitmanas, when the different teams of the warriors went in search of Sita, so one of the team was led by the Jamwant. Jamwant was the bear born and Hanuman was monkey born, God born as monkey. Hanuman in the childhood, he was, was very mischievous. A sage was doing the prayers, meditation. He disturbed him, he troubled him. He could raise his arm, raise the sage and bring him down, up and down, up and down like that. The sage got worried, sage got angry and he cursed him that this knowledge, because of this you are creating mischief, you will forget it. You will forget. Then it happened, Hanuman besieged, begged him. He said, when someone will remind you of your inner potential, only then this awakening, this knowledge, this wisdom will come back to you. So on the bank of the, on the shore of the ocean, the entire group is staying. They know that Sita is captured by the demon king Ravan and she is across the ocean on the other side. They know everything, but there was no way to cross this ocean of life that we are always in. You know that divinity, the bliss, the life of prosperity, life of oneness is beyond that shore. But how to cross that shore from this end to reach the other end? That is the spiritual journey. Hanuman is this that is moment, that shore. Like a Hanuman, each one of you is on this shore. Forgotten your inner capabilities your potentialities, then Jamvant reminds him, Hanuman, remember, remember that wisdom, remember that technique that you have known from the birth. You are capable of that and rem remember that. Hanuman goes into deep trance, remembers it, as he remembers it, he flew across the ocean to reach on the other side. Now on the way, many obstacles came. The gods and goddesses came to test him. As it happens in your journey, when you are moving from one shore to another, many obstacles come to him. Sometimes in the form of situations, they come like a stumbling blocks. You are dealing with many people, the family, the friends, and they all come like stumbling blocks along the path. With wisdom, Hanuman reaches the other shore. 
there were many one there's this is the entire story of hanuman chalisa the the valor the wisdom the valor without wisdom without awakening is of no use and that is manifested through the hanuman chalisa many obstacles is like <coughs> you face along the path of journey from this shore to the other shore comes hanuman overcomes all those stumbling blocks maintains his single minded objective to discover to search the inner innerness in the form of that energy field sita and give her the message the feminine aspect of divinity to give he is carrying the message of the shraddha carrying the message of vishwas trust to the female aspect of trust which is shraddha when these two merge together the message is complete you are like that dreams can be private truth is not and cannot be truth is cosmic truth is cannot be mine or yours truth cannot be christian or hindu or muslim but we are out of ignorance consider that muslim truth is different than the christian truth than the hindu truth truth cannot be simultaneously indian greek german or american truth cannot be private a german will dream in german language so dreams are private whatsoever is private remember it must belong to the world of dreams and world of ignorance and unconsciousness truth is an open sky it is for all it is one any bird can fly with into it soar to infinite heights remember truth is not that is why when lao tse speaks the language may be different buddha talks the language is different heraclitus overflows the language is different but they mean the same they mean the same they indicate towards the same buddhas do not live in a private world the private world has disappeared with their dreams desires and mind mind has a private world world of conflict world of duality world of egocentric identities world of memories the waking has only one thing in common all those who are awake they have one world in common and that is existence the vast open sky that invites you to come and soar to infinite height to infinite altitude it is an open invitation to each one of you and all those who are asleep and dreaming have their own world diversified and many faced i ask you to live in the world i ask you to live in this world but do not let the world live in you you are living in the amidst the conflict amidst the problems but these problems are not part of your innerness your psychology your world has to be dropped indeed that is the only thing i require of you only that i require of you i do not ask you to leave your wife or husband i do not 
ask you to leave your job. I do not ask you to leave your money or anything else. No. I simply say, leave the private world of dreams. That is the beginning of the spiritual journey for me. And for that matter, for each Buddha. There is no need to leave this world, the visible, going to the Himalayas, to monasteries, leaving wife, husband and children. That is not the point at all. That is not the world to leave. How can you leave it and where else will you go? As long as you have, you are dreaming, you are living in your own private world, wherever you go, it will go with you. Even the Himalayan mountain, <coughs> even the Himalayan mountain and the caves all belong to this world. The real world, which has to be renounced, is the mind your egocentric identities, a storehouse of your memory and the private dreaming. If you renounce it, sitting in the marketplace, you are in the Himalayan mountains. If you do not renounce it, even at the top of the Himalayan mountain, you will create a private world around you. How can you escape yourself? How can you escape yourself? Wherever you go, your you, the egocentric identities, the, the storehouse of the memory will go with you. Wherever you go, you will behave in the same way. Whether you are in the temple, or in a church or in a mosque, you will behave in the same way. Situations may be different, but how can you be different? What is important? Change in you. You're, you remember that after beginning this journey, forgiveness is the greatest quality along the path. If you cannot forget Forgive, not forget, forgive your friends, family, husband, wife for whatever they have done and transcend beyond that. And let there be compassion, forgiveness and compassion are the two feet of the seeker along the path. Forgiveness and compassion, chama or karuna, these are the two feet on which you walk through the invisible path. Situations may be different, but how can you be different? Whatever be the situation of conflict, argument or anything, you have to walk through, walk through the two instruments of forgiveness and compassion. You will be asleep in the Himalayan mountains or in New York or in London or in Trinidad or in India or in Germany or anywhere else. What difference does it make whether you sleep in New Delhi or Germany or anywhere else? Wherever you are, you will be dreaming. Drop dreaming. Become more and more alert. Suddenly, the process of disappearing as the light dawns, the clouds, the dark clouds of dreaming start disappearing. And with all the dreams, all miseries to disappear, you are in the vast open sky. Your journey is to continue. Remember forgiveness and compassion as your two tools amidst all circumstances and situations. Enough for now.